Welcome to this tutorial on using pivot tables with the online version of Microsoft Excel. Quick introduction, I'm Ian. I'm going to be taking you through the tutorial today. So in the tutorial, we're going to be taking a large volume of data in our Excel. So you're probably used to this. You've got a spreadsheet, you've got a large amount of data in the table, and now you want to ask some questions of that data. You might want to know what is my total sales by my region or what is my total sales by my customers? So what we're going to be doing is taking that information and we're going to be transforming it into pivot tables. And you'll see using pivot tables are going to answer those questions really quick and easy. So without any coding, without any formulas, we're going to be quickly creating those reports. Okay, so before we get into the tutorial, just a quick one, please make sure that you subscribe and like the channel. And then you'll see the other tutorials that we're going to be doing. Please also look out for other tutorials on Excel pivot tables. You're going to see that we do have quite a large amount of tutorials just on this topic and learn. But let's jump into the tutorial and I will see you there. So as you can see, we've now got our online Excel open. So we've got it open in our internet browser. So please note, you can probably use most browsers. This should work in Safari, it should work in Chrome, it should work in Edge. Basically, Microsoft Excel should work in pretty much most browsers you're going to use. Just make sure you've got the appropriate licensing from Microsoft for this. Now what we've done is we've loaded some sales data as demo data. And as you can see with the data on the screen, we've got some different columns. Now each of these columns is actually a field of data. So if you look at from the left hand side, you'll see we've got an order ID, an order date, order quantity. And as you go across the right hand side, you'll see more fields of data. Then if you go down each of the rows, you will see that each row is actually a record of data. Now this is really important, when you're working with pivot tables, you need to have your data as a table. So basically this shows you the type of table that you need. Now there's quite a bit of data in this table. If I use control and the down key in Windows, you'll see that I go down and there's about 8,400 rows of data in total. Quite a bit of data that we're going to be working with. Now as I said in the introduction, what we're going to be doing is we want to now summarize this data. We want to ask questions of this data. Now, if I was working with a spreadsheet, if I wanted to know what was my total sales by, say, each of my customer states, that could take me quite a while to do. If I wanted to know the total profit by each of my customer names, also could take a while. What if I wanted to know what was my total sales by my customer state and my product categories? Now, each permutation that you're creating of those questions can take you quite a long time in a spreadsheet. So we're going to be using a pivot table to help us to answer those questions. Also, as I've said before, we've got various tutorials that go on from this. So please look out for them that have more features about what we can use for pivot tables. Okay, so let's focus on just creating our simple pivot tables to begin with. The first part is you have to tell the system what data you're using for your pivot table. Now, if I use one, just one cell here, it will know then that all the other cells around this are part of the table. So it will actually use all of the cells. However, if you pick a range like this, then it will actually use that range of data. So the best you can do is just select one cell and then we're going to go up to insert and you're going to be using your pivot table option. And as you can see, the first one is from table or range. So we're going to be using that to create the pivot table. So you just select that and you'll see now a pane pops up and it just confirms that our source is a want in this case to K8400, which is correct. You could change this if you wanted to. So if you wanted to change the range, you could do that. Then it says, where do we want to create the pivot table? So in this case, we're going to insert into a new sheet. You could also create ones in existing sheets. And as I said, in further tutorials, I'm going to get into more sophisticated pivot tables, and we'll show you where you can have more than one pivot table actually on a sheet together. So as I said, just look out for those tutorials. If you go down as well, Microsoft recommends some different pivot tables you could use. But you'll tend to find the pivot tables are so easy to put together and rather create your own. So we're going to use new sheet. And you're going to see that a new sheet now gets created. Now your pivot table is actually a component that is created within your spreadsheet. So you can see at the moment when I've got my pivot table selected, it shows me all the fields that are available for the pivot table. However, if I click off the pivot table, you will see then that the pivot table fields disappears. So just go back to your pivot table, click on the component, and you'll see then we can work with the pivot table. Now, one of the things that you might want to do is that you'll see this range of fields here are all in the order that they are in the data source. Now, when you're working with pivot tables, often you find that working with the fields in alphabetical order might be easier. So the first thing we're going to do is just go to our tools at the top and we're going to tell this we want to sort it A to Z. And there we go. We've now got our field names in the order. 
Also, you will see that the headers that we had for each of the columns has been used for the field names. So please make sure that each of these names are meaningful. If you want to change any of them, you can go back to your data, change the names, and then what you do is you actually just refresh your data. So in your pivot table fields, you can just go to your refresh and then that will refresh it. So if we go to data, for example, then you could just say, I want to refresh all of my pivot tables. So just use that. Okay, we're going to go back to our pivot table though. We're going to go back to our fields. Now let's go back to some of the questions that we had a little bit earlier. So let's say, for example, we want to start off and we want to know what was our total sales by our different regions. Now what you'll see is that with the list of fields is you've also got the rows, columns, and values. So these three blocks will decide on how your pivot table is created. So let's use a simple example. Let's start with region. Now if I select my region, you see I just click on that. Now automatically, because it's a text field, it goes into the rows. And then what happens is it goes through your data source and it looks at all the 8,400 rows and it pulls back all the unique values. So in this case, we've actually got four unique regions that are in the table. As you can see, that was pretty quick. Now, if we use a numeric field, let's say, for example, we use sales, we click on that, you'll see that that automatically actually goes into values because sales is a numeric value. Now, automatically, you will see that each of these sales values have now been summed up for each of the regions. So there we go. We've actually got now straight away an understanding of what is the total sales for each of our regions. Now you'll see that this is not too easy to read at the moment, our formatting is not great. So what you can do is you can actually highlight all of the different cells and we're going to format those cells. And the way we do that, we're going to go back to the home menu. We're going to go to our number formatting. And I'm going to use the thousand separator. I'll put that in. You can see I got it in my thousands. And I get two decimal points. I'm going to actually decrease the decimal points, remove that. And you can see that that is now far easier to actually read when it's been nicely formatted. So that's how we format our numbers. So there we go. We've now got our first pivot table showing as a summary. But what if you wanted to ask a different question? What if you wanted to know what is my total sales by my product subcategory, for example? Now, what you can do is you can go to your region. And if you click on the drop down, you'll see that there is an option to remove the field. Select that, remove the field, and you will just now have the sum of sales only. If we go back and we've got product subcategory. Now I could click on the box here and automatically product subcategory would go into the rows. But another option is, is that you can click on this and you can drag it. And you'll see now when I drag it, that a gray bar appears. And this is going to tell me I'm going to drop it in the rows. So when I drop it now, automatically the field goes into rows. And you can see now also my table has been updated. So again, it's gone through the data source. It's pulled out all the unique values of product subcategory. And it's now calculated the total sum of sales for each one. You'll also note that the number formatting has stayed the same. So we've got a nicely number formatted as well. Okay, so as you can see, this is really easy to work with. Let's look at one more example. So basically, let's say we wanted to know what the sum of sales is for each of our customer names. Now we've got a lot of customers in the data set. So again, we can remove this product subcategory. Now, another way we can remove it is to actually click on it, drag it. And if you drag it into the spreadsheet and just let go, it will remove it then from the row. In this case, if we want to use customer name, another way is I could just drag this into my row, drop it, and there we go. We've now got our customer names. And again, now you can see my pivot table has been updated with the total sales for each of the customers. Okay, so we're going to conclude the tutorial there. The next one, we're going to be looking at a little bit more sophistication. We're going to look at how we can use different hierarchies and when our columns to create more sophisticated tables. Then as I say, there is a range of tutorials as well that will give you even more sophistication around pivot tables. But I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial.